Good morning, everyone. Make sure I'm unmuted. Just want to have you guys give me a thumbs up, check in that you can Good hear me. You. Hey, hey, how are you? Doing great. Great. Sounds like you guys can definitely hear me. Just pulling up my PowerPoint right now and kicking off. We got a fun class today, man. This fire stuff is, or at least last time went amazing based on my notes that I looked at. Uh, we had a great session last time, and that means we bless it every time we do this. So I am excited about today's info. Unless you guys, you guys work with buyers. Do you have a problem getting these buyers to convert as much as you want? Need more buyers to convert? Feel like you're missing some buyers out there in the marketplace? What do you guys want to get out of today's session? What do we want to make sure we walk away with? Because... The fun part about, um, oh, I realize you're looking at down at the floor here. The, the great thing about this style of going through Ignite is it's a conversation. We get to talk about what you guys are really dealing with, what challenges you have, what I can best, you know, help find or direct or conversations to pull out of you guys as far as your buyer side of your business. And also keep in mind too, that most of the time when you're, first starting out, you might have a little heavier buyer side of your business than listing side. Even if you've been in business for a while, they kind of even out to about 50-50. I mean, we would all love to have 75% listings and 25% buyers. How, actually, let me ask you that. How many would agree? It would be great to have a 75% listing business with 25% buyers. Yeah? Yeah. Right, can, I, can I challenge you all on that just a little bit? Because if you're going to take the listing and you're going to have leverageable tools in place that you're going to maximize your business from every single listing that you get, um, I, I mean, I will tell you my, my process, my thought process was I wanted three buyers from every listing. So think about it just for a second. I want you guys to think a little differently and just think big picture, leveraging everything you do. Um, I talk about all the time getting a five to 10 times return on anything that you do, right? Mm -hmm. So if you get a listing, see our industry teaches us listings are it. Listings drive the business. Listings, listings, listings. However, if you have an awesome marketing system in place, so one of the things we'll talk about when we get to sellers, it might even be next, next uh, Wednesday, actually, I think is sellers. I haven't looked yet. But my system is an instant on listing. So I touch it once within an hour, everything's done. All the marketing is in place, not minimal marketing. All the marketing is in place and we're getting, we're capturing leads off that listing right away. So what I'm getting at is think about it. Like if you get a listing, man, shouldn't that be just attracting a ton of buyers in the marketplace? Yes, they might be working with another agent, but you've also got all the consumers that are calling around looking. So I always planned that if we could get three buyers for every listing we took, then we could grow our business exponentially, right? So as I look at listings, if you didn't have a system in place to capture those buyers, you might want to reconsider that. And really, if you, you could even keep your buyer business bigger than your listing business, and that would mean you're actually capitalizing on three buyers for every listing. So I just used to get upset when I would list a house put the sign in the yard. By the time I got back to the office, we had offers coming in or we had people interested and I hadn't started any marketing. So that meant I did all, it got all that energy into getting this listing and I totally missed the leverageable opportunity to get some buyers off of it. So anyway, I just want you to kind of think about that and I'm going to shut up for a second and see if anybody's having kind of an aha moment or like a uh, Anything you want to share or talk about and or get out of the class today? I mean, what do you guys think about that? Is that, <clears throat> you know, makes a lot of what you're thinking? Just Brad, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, from my, um, from my listings, um, I've gotten, you know, sign calls and um, from Circle Prospect, I've got people who are, who are looking and who are like, well, if you find anything else, can you, can you start looking for me? Um, and also from my advertising, I got a lot of leads, buyer leads. And, um, you know, trying to convert those is, really, those is really important. The ones that are in person are great. The internet leads for me have been tough to convert because they just kind of like, it's like they, they, they clicked on it and 
were they serious or were they just like playing surf in the net, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, there's a really funny TikTok video out there with this guy. It's it, You can tell he's a newer agent too. And he's just so frustrated because he's like, the text, they just texted me and wanted information about the listing. I called them back in 38 seconds and they told me to never call them again and take me off their list. And he's like, you just texted me. You wanted information on the listing. So yeah, those internet people, they're a little crazy and insane. Uh, but we're going to talk about that today too. How to capitalize on those a little more and and. Ultimately, guys, here's the deal. I want to see you close more deals because you sat in on this session today. Like, what can you take from today and actually use it in the next few days and then go, oh, my gosh, I converted a buyer that I know I wouldn't have converted if I had not attended that Ignite. And then we got to put that somewhere to show, like, to document it for yourself that it's it's also telling you that, man, I'm so glad I went to that session. But it's also telling other people too, hey, this this is good stuff, right? So, and if you're none of you are doing anything with it, then we're just having fun hanging out together. And that's not so fun for me. <laughs> so I want to see you guys excel in your business and, and get more deals faster, kind of give you the shortcut to get more deals so you can get out of wherever you are right now and get to that next level. And that next level will push you to the next level, right? So thank you, Scott, for sharing that. Anybody else, anything you want to make sure you get out of today or what seems to be your biggest frustration? So we know internet buyers right now, not getting in them on the phone are tough to convert. Anybody else have any buyer stuff that's showing up in your world? No? Or are there lots of them, you just can't think of what they are? <laughs> Or do you not have any buyers at all? I don't have a buyer problem. That's a problem, right? All right. You guys can always, you know, be yourselves on here. Be open. This is a safe space. Um, you guys can always bring your stuff to this class because I guarantee you, like when, when I get you guys involved and you start asking some questions and bringing up some things, you guys share the coolest stuff like we had some we had one class i just remember it was unbelievable the conversation that kicked off the class and it's because you guys got involved so think about that as you're coming in when you look at that topic if you're really committed like just committed to your business and giving yourself an hour to prepare for this every day printing off the book ahead of time skimming through it come into the session skim through it again tomorrow with your notes and then also skim through the next session for tomorrow and come to the class. So I know it's a, it's a definitely a commitment, but it's just blocking that hour out on your calendar as you're going through Ignite. And I'm telling you, if you get through this, probably if you get through this material four times, so that's a one year commitment almost in one year, if you've been through this material four times, I guarantee you're going to start seeing it show up naturally versus like trying to remember adding another thing to your to-do list. Um, you just kind of stay plugged into it and hear it over and over and over and over again. So there's probably about a couple dozen of you that are going through for the second time. And uh, we're going to do it a third time and a fourth time and all that other stuff. So anyway, all right. If anybody doesn't have anything else, I'm going to jump into the slideshow here. I'll pause for a second. If you want to jump in, unmute and jump in. Otherwise, we will also open up the chat box and I'll try to watch that as well. Actually, oh, I'm not lying. Shit. I will watch it every once in a while, but um, trying's not, we don't try, right? But it is on another screen and it is on another screen, right? Oh man, all this. This bold talk is disappearing out of my language for today. Uh oh. All right, guys, here we are. We're talking about we're still on growing our business. We got two sessions left after this one, and that's about growing your business. Then, what we're going to do is when you're excited and you've gotten the information to grow your business, now we got to plug that in and actually run your business. And that will be the elements the next nine sessions after that. So, we're almost to the halfway point through this round of Ignite. And I'm telling you what, this is probably the most comprehensive overview of an entire real estate business that I know of. So uh, lead generating for buyers. And also, um, this does say buyers and sellers, but keep in mind that statistically, they have said that usually about 70 something percent 
of all buyers are actually sellers or own a home as well. Um, so that's another alternative or opportunity for you. So here we go. For buyers, 89% of the buyers purchased their home through a real estate agent. 41% of them found it, found them from a referral, which is interesting because 41% said they were referred. But yet if you talk to real estate agents, um, they'll say something like 50% of their business is referrals. That's just like a standard response. And if you're in any kind of referral classes, they've actually talked about having a hundred percent referral business. And again, I just like to open the conversation up and talk around it because this is how my brain thinks and it's how I talk to myself. So I like to just open this conversation up so you don't get, you know, trapped in one way of thinking and you're looking at all opportunities. And I, I, I base a lot of this stuff on what Gary, like Gary will ask these same type of questions, which is how I got to the point that I think about it. And when you think about a hundred percent referral business, when you're hearing that in the context of whatever session or class you might be sitting in, it seems like it makes sense. It's like, oh man, yes, we like working with people that are referred, they're easier, they trust you more. Hence, bring back to your master list, right? Make that master list every day, add names to it, find addresses, find phone numbers, and use that as your feeding list to get them into your database. And for most of you, that is command, feeding five people in a day, taking them off oh, your master no. list. Once you get their address and their phone number, <laughs> you pick up the phone and call them and you write them a handwritten note, right? Here's the thing though. If it's a hundred percent referral business, then that means when we go to the bullseye, that means that this whole piece of our business is non-existent and we're just operating out of this piece of business. Now, this is cool because this is a 12 to two return. This is a 50 to one return. So obviously you're gonna get more business from your inner circle. However, when you master the relationship and those referrals that are coming in, that's coming from the outer ring. So you don't necessarily shut that circle off. What I'm trying to get you guys to do is think like getting out of the circle to be your base for your business because you have to go convince strangers to like you and trust you. You have to somehow convince them, like Scott said earlier, getting them on the phone from the internet. Like, are they serious? Or are they not serious? So again, as I expand your thinking, write this down. Whether they're serious or not serious, they are going to be serious sometime in the next five to 10 years. So now if I said that, what does that, what perspective does that now put on that internet lead? It actually puts a perspective that 100% of the internet leads that come through the system are actually buyers. However, only one to 2% of them are actually a buyer right now. So whether they're serious or not serious isn't really the question. We're looking for the serious ones now and how to filter the questions and bring their, um, their priority in buying a house to the top so we can service those and get that next deal. However, 98% of them are still buyers. And even if they're not buyers, they might be renting <sighs> for their next couple moves. Okay. I know we got an open mic somewhere, so I'm gonna figure out where we're at. All right, if I muted you, I apologize. If you wanna talk, just unmute yourself again. However, so if you know how to keep, if you know how to get them on the phone, talk to everyone, whether like if they're a renter and they've got bad credit, I've got the connections for them to go get that credit cleaned up. And if they go get that credit cleaned up and they do what they're supposed to do because they really would like to own a home someday and or may possibly own a home someday, right, in the future, it might not be their next move. It might be two moves down the road before they get everything cleaned up. But I connect them with uh, the credit repair company. They go through the process and you stay in touch with them and you're just checking in. Man, every time you say real estate, they would love to own a home. They would love to own a home. They're being told they can't. They've been, they're being told they can't. They got to rent. They hate their landlords. They hate the place they're renting, whatever it might be. And you stay in touch as you get through the process. I am telling you that one day when they get their credit cleaned up, because everybody will get eventually, if they want to, will get to a point where they can do that if they really want to. And when that happens, I'm telling you, if you stayed in touch with them for 10 years, 
and they got their credit cleaned up and they're buying their first house and you've been talking to them throughout the 10 years, the excitement of owning this house and working towards it, doesn't matter whether they actually have the energy to do it hard or not, you guide them through there and you stay in touch with them. You will own them and you will own all their friends and family for probably the rest of their life. And everybody's good for about three to four moves at a minimum in their lifetime, right? Just think about how many times you've moved or how many times you bought a house if you own a home. So, and if you just owned your first home now, how old are you and how many more do you think you're going to buy? Or are you going to stay? Did you buy your first house or you stay there and die? You might not be very average, which is fine. You can, you don't have to be average. Just, we let, we talk about being, you know, out of our comfort zone and not being average, but if you're there, that's fine. Then it just means you got a great relationship. And when anyone they know is moving, which think about this, every hundred people they know, that's moving every five to seven years is another 147 transactions over a year at five a day, right? If they have a thousand friends, they've got another 147 possible referral opportunities that are happening. They're just not, it's not top of mind for them looking for that. So when you have that army of people out there because you're staying in touch with them and you touch base about real estate, you don't sell them real estate. You're just the real, their real estate go-to person. And with that, you get more referrals. So there's a ton of opportunities out there. 75% of all uh, buyers interviewed one real estate agent during their home search. So that is the key to getting them on the phone and collecting their information and connecting with them, right? So you can remove that salesperson hat a little bit. Don't try to sell or don't try to think of what script I need. Just get into conversation of, find out what their why is. Why do you want to buy a home? Well, who wouldn't want to own a home? Well, I know. So if you owned a home, what would that do for you? This is your question. Write this down. If you owned a home, what would that do for you? Well, I would be not be renting. Okay, so if you weren't renting, what would that do for you? Right? I mean, this is how you discover people's whys. I sent you... Um, I believe the very first session I sent you guys a download and you can get it off the, the Google Drive on. It was a summary of what's your why. And it was how to ask these questions. Another great one to figure out a why is whatever they respond with. Say, tell me more about that. These, these are so simple. Tell me more about that. What would that do for you if you had that? Right. And the, the, it allows them to expand. And it doesn't sound cheesy when you're in the middle of a conversation. Well, what do you mean by that? I mean, that's simple. Right. And you can ask that those three or four questions three or four times. And you're going to dig about five, six layers deep. Pretty soon they're telling you their whole life story. That's how we fill out those in it, those incoming sheets. Anybody have any questions about the conversations or anything I'm saying or how it's relating? To what I do, doing. Brad. Yeah. It, it's Lucia. Hi, how are you? Yes, great. Um, I'm doing great. Good. Uh, so two of the leads that I have have specifically chosen building complexes that never seem to have units that come up for sale. Mm -hmm. I love this. You know, I'd love to buy one. If you if you ever see something come up in, in this, this is what I want. So, you know... I, I'd love to hear how you would deal with that person. Yeah. So, I mean, if it is that complex, I might, I, I know I would ask. So what is it about that complex that makes it so awesome? Uh, well, it's local to our area, but in an, the next town and has much lower taxes, low, uh, it's a townhouse, uh, low monthly payments, you know, comparably to our area. So, is so you there get all the no, benefits. Yeah. So is there nothing else that that is the only oddball thing and everything else is 500 grand more than that one little place? It seems to be. Yeah. It's like a little well-kept secret. <laughs> it appears. Well, but what I'm saying is there's probably more of those. I doubt there's just one. Right. That I, I'm unaware of. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it is, I mean, you can go into MLS and look at that complex. And so a lot of times I'll look at see how it's listed. If they're listed as townhouses or they're listed as condos, right? And I'll look at the proximity 
And you could actually, on most of the MLSs, you can plop a little dot and do a circle for five miles around that, right? Right, I know. I know how and to then, do that, right. Yep. And then you can put in the price range of, of what's in there, what makes that such a great price range. And then you can just hit search again. And honestly, this is just a little research thing. It doesn't take a whole lot of time, but just clicking through some of the sales over the last five years and seeing which ones look like that, you're going to find another complex just like it. Okay. There, there's, and you might even like, if they're going out of the area, like if this is where they live and this is the outer area, so the taxes are less, what about this circle around the outside, like five miles from there, right? So right. you could actually like, I don't know if you can do a double ring, but you could take their center circle out and do another circle around the outside and look for the same exact thing. Got it. Got yeah. It. And okay. it's searching condos. It's searching the HOA amounts. You know, you can put in your searches a couple different ways to narrow that search down. But this is I'm so glad you brought it up because when we talk about, you know, as you're building your business and you preview 10 listings a week, right? This, this is the same thing. This is like spending some time to go in and preview other listings in the area so you can find the other little hidden gems. And I'm telling you, what? they're not, that's the only one they know of too. And you show them another building or two that's kind of like that, that's in a decent area and they drive by. It's like, hey, drive by this complex and see what you think. I know it's mm -hmm. another little place like that. It's not the one we were talking about, but just drive by and see what you think. They'll call you back and go, hey, we actually, that location's pretty good. The building looks okay, you know, and, or you even showed them one. So, hey, that building, if I'm following up and one comes up on that search, I always send, I always put my buyers on a search automatically in MLS. It's the first thing I do. We talk about that today. Like as soon as I get a hold of them, they go on an auto search from MLS. So they're feeding properties as they're coming live. And then I have a default kind of copy and paste um, paragraph that I put with that search. It says, hey, forget about all those other sites. This is directly from the system that the real estate agents use. Right. Uh, that is, this is directly from the system uh, that the real estate agents use. So we're going to get you these properties the minute they come live. So I would have a conversation with them and say, I, I, I know that I know we're looking for that complex and, and listen to this guys. Cause this is what I say to make sure they don't tell you later that you're not listening to what they're telling them. I understand this is the one complex you want. I know of some other ones that are similar. They may or may not be the areas you like, but they're kind of similar. And I'm just going to oversend those. I'm going to oversend you listings is what I say. I'm going to send you more than what you really want to see. And it's on the internet and you're looking at it online. So if you click the map and or you look at pictures, if there are some, and it's totally off base from what you're looking for, just delete it or ignore it. You will not. I literally say this. You will not hurt my feelings. I'm not, right. I'm sending you stuff that I know you might not be looking for, but if something is just another little hidden gem that comes up and it's so cheap, let's just say it's half its value and it has four or five of the things you want and you can get into it so cheap. I don't want to be the one that decides whether or not to show you that or not. Do you see how I just covered my butt for setting up yes, a generic oversearch? Yeah. So it's not me sending you stuff and not listening to you. And the last thing I can do is go through all my internet buyers and do a personal search for them every single day. Guys, that is not a duplicatable model. Uh, I mean, you can't service enough people that way, knowing that only 1% of them are par probably buying now. Now, if it is a 1% pre-approved cash and they need something, I might be doing some individual, individual searches for that. However, I can't imagine that that would be more than probably a half a dozen people for anybody at their busiest time in your career. You know, you, they, they do track, and I'm kind of giving you guys just so much like experience in real estate that you can work with about seven active buyers at any given time. You can work with 20, 30, 40 active sellers at a given time, if 30 and 40, if you have a system, but you could work with 10 to 20 buy sellers at one time, but you can only really work with six to seven buyers at one time if you're out showing actively. So again, when you streamline these systems and Sean Kokoska, Diana Kokoska's uh, son, 
in bold, he had that buyer consultation process that he took people through. And it, and he literally said in the consultation, if I show you more than five homes, I haven't done my job. And so it's not that you won't not always show five homes. I mean, literally, literally, I think my average is probably three. It might even be two. I usually show them a couple houses, but there's always going to be one person I show six or seven houses to. They just haven't decided what they're looking for. I'm drilling in on it every single time. Most of those people, by the time we've looked at more than five houses, I can tell just by looking at the MLS photos when they go, what about this one? I mean, I just did it with an, an investor today. What about this one? I said, nope, that is, that's going to be like the other two that we saw that just were more work than what you're telling me you want. And then he always texts back and goes, yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. So they're just like, they're, which is good because it's top of mind that they're watching the properties. And I always say, I'm glad you're watching the properties. Keep watching because when there's a diamond in the rough, we're going to be the first one to see it. So you can see how I've transferred a lot of this ownership to them. I'm available all the time. They can text me any address. Yep, that one's not available yet. It's on preview stage. So that, again, that other address that he just gave me this morning, I did this right before I started the class. That was what I was doing was texting him. And I already sent an email to the listing agent because it's in preview status. And I just copy the email. I do this all fast. It's all like to get in and out as quick as possible. This was two minutes before I'm going live with you guys. I'm copy and pasting the agent's email. I copy the address and I put showing, paste it. And I type in the email. When's this going to be available for showings? Do you have any interior photos and disclosures? Send. And it takes me two seconds to do that. I don't need to do any more than that because he's not. I mean, first of all, we can't see it. I don't need to like get into a whole dissertation of everything that we're looking for. I just need to know when we can go and see it. And then I send him back a text and said, I'll let you know when it's hitting the market because that agent will respond to me. And did you drive by it yet and really check it out? It's vacant. So feel free to pop around, look in the picture or look in the windows. Now, obviously you can't do that in every complex or anything, but if it's an open complex or something like that, you could have them go by and check out the area. So I always have them drive by first. Again, I, I, I make them participate in the process. And if they play the game, then I'm plugged in. I'll be the first one out to show them. I got one gal. I probably showed about six, six houses, seven houses over a year. I mean, maybe once every two months, she calls me out of the blue, but she's watching them every day because I'm watching the MLS. Good stuff. Yes, thank Everybody you very else? much. And you guys, are you getting some good stuff out of it? I'm seeing some head nods. Yep, you can relate. Good. So those questions definitely help. All right. Cultivating the lead. This is the biggest part, guys, is that it is it is so much about staying in touch with them because nobody else is going to stay in touch with them. The only way to do that is to capture them and get them in your database and start a smart plan that reminds you how you need to stay in touch with them, when to call them again. So a lot of internet buyers, I mean, we have a call, I'll have to look at my system, but I think it's like every probably four or five days or something like that, we have a call or a text message in there. They've gotten a couple of things from us where in mail, we sent them a picture of what their search looks like. I don't know if I had one. I just changed one up. Yeah, I don't have one laying around here. I was just putting envelope le letters in the envelope and one of them came up and it showed them what the email looks like in case it was going into their spam folder. But I also emailed that to them as well, the, what, the, what it looks like. So what I did was I set myself up on a search in the MLS. So it sent me the auto find on the property. I copied that screen and that became my touch piece to say, watch for this email, make sure you put this in as a safe email because you got to know how it comes in. Um, side note, side note from buyers in general, however, it is about capturing buyers, Google your name or Google some real estate sites. It's, well, I, I always Google your name and see what sites pop up like realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, like put in one of your property addresses or one that you've sold or something like that. And when it pops up, fill in the, I've got questions form, or I'd like more information about this. Where does it go? Do you even know where that goes? Where it comes in at? Where is it sitting? Is it coming into command? Is it going to your email? And what you're going to find out is probably about 70 to 80, maybe even 90% of the time you fill out that form on your own listing, 
it's not coming to you. It's going to some other agent and your phone rings and it's the other agent. Now, Brad Corn, Corn with a K in Kansas City, 30 years of selling real estate, right? The agent should know who I am. When I plug my name in, they call me back and go, yes, I'm calling about the property. And I'm like, yo, Joey, it's Brad. And he's like, oh, what's up, Brad? And it's like, they're not even paying attention, right? However, I also know that I didn't get the lead because I came nowhere. And I always throw like uh, some weird name so that I can make sure I know it came from like Cornillo for Zillow, right? Or Corntor for Realtor.com or something like that. I always do that as my last name just so I can see where it comes in and I can catch it. Um, but man, that's going to be a wake up call exercise for you right there. It's like you're not even capturing all your leads. So I've called Realtor.com after that and said, hey, this is my listing and my things on there. It says ask about information. And I didn't get, no, we don't do that. We, we don't give those leads to other people. <laughs> yeah, you do. Because somebody else always calls me and I don't ever get my own information. So they can say they don't do it all day long, right? All right, questions on that? Anybody? Okay. Cool, cool. So it is about capturing them. And I'll tell you the best way to capture and the best way to do everything is get them on the phone, like Scott was saying earlier. However, just remember that less than 1% of them are actually moving right now. So don't beat yourself up when you don't get them on the phone. Just set up a follow-up plan that is very persistent and consistent, and it doesn't stop until you're ready to stop the lead. So for example, when I have an internet lead come in, you've got something you've got their name and their email sometimes you i really most of the time you have a phone number with it too but sometimes you won't sometimes you have phone number and no email whatever it might be and if it's mickey mouse i don't worry about that one um, i'll try and call whatever numbers there i will still probably go to fastpeoplesearch.com put their name in because a lot of times their name may look real but their email's fake and i'll put that in and just see if something easy pops up that's in the area um, now if it's john smith it's over. I, I'm, I'm not even worried about John Smith, right? There's no way you can find John Smith. <laughs> he, he has about 12 people living within five miles of himself. So anyway, it is about capturing though and getting that into the database and starting the smart plan or campaign for internet lead conversion plan. I haven't converted them. I haven't gotten them on the phone. Now, first thing I did, the second the lead comes in, I hit that button and try to call them right then because they're sitting in front of a computer. They just hit the submit button and it came through unless there's a delay coming from the website that they're on. Sometimes there could be a delay of a day or two and you're not going to catch them. But the second it comes in, man, guys, that that is the leverage from everything you're doing. It should be treated like gold bars falling out of the sky. And yet uh, I know so many times there's just a lot of stuff going on or we're, we're working on something and well, I got to review, review my manual because this is going to be a great class tomorrow or it was a great class today. I'm looking at my notes and writing it out and then you get a buyer lead and it's just like, okay, okay, I'm, I, I need to finish my thought here. No, you drop everything and get buyers. If you don't have more business than you can handle, every single buyer is a gold bar falling out of the sky. And all here's, I'm just telling you what I figured out because the industry used to say that if you called them back within an hour or two, that was kind of the goal. And then pretty soon they said, you got to call them back within a half an hour. Then they said, you got to call them back within five minutes. Now you have about five seconds and even five seconds is probably too long. Every time I click that button, if the second it comes in and goes in, I get them on the phone way more often and they're sitting in front of the computer and they talk to me and they tell me their life story. Let me give you a script because if you guys are going to start responding instantly and they answer the phone, here's my opening script is, hey, we just crossed paths on the internet. You don't know me from Adam <laughs> yet, but I'm here to help you, right? Is there some, you were looking for a particular property or have you just been doing a general search? And I kind of get, start to get them involved and they'll say, oh, I'm just starting to look or yeah, I've been looking for a house. We're starting to process. It's like, great. So when do you want to move? Start moving into those questions. When are you trying to move? And then they forget that they're talking to a stranger for a second. 
And then I, I also say, now, what other properties that do you have on your list there that you've been waiting to hear back from? They almost always have two or three other properties or a list of five other properties. And I said, man, isn't it frustrating that you just want to get some basic information and you just don't hear back from people right away? Well, you got me on the phone now. This is what I do for full time. This is my living, right? Now, if you don't, if you're part time right now, you're going to be full time, right? So you're going to say, this is what I do. I do real estate. So if you don't want to lie and say it's full time, then say, this is what I do. I do real estate. So just give me a list of all the properties that you have sitting there. I'll pull them all up right now while we're talking. So if you keep them on the phone and you can pull up, yeah, that one's under contract already. You know, that one's not available yet. Those other two are available. Did you want to go take a look at them? I mean, have you started the pre-approval process? Have you talked to a lender? So you just start going through the process and let's get you with my lender first. You can call him on the phone right now. I'm going to text you his number and I'm going to text him your number. And you guys connect, just run five, 10 minutes, get some basic information, run the pre-approval. Let me go see what the showing instructions are like on those properties, how easy they are to get into. And if we can get a pre-approval letter, then we can get in and see those properties. So see how I'm not going to just go show them properties. I, I, there's too many people that say, well, I'm going to build rapport if I go meet them. Okay, so if, if you've got all the time in the world and you're really spending time on lead generating every single day and you don't have anything else to do, Go show properties if you, you can count them as your preview. But I'm going to tell you that you won't be able to do that for very long. You're going to want to get them streamlined. And until they're pre-approved, I really don't go meet them at a property. I can connect with them on the phone just by having a general conversation and not making it about scripts and closing and going to the property. But it's about, here's your script, how to take advantage of the current market conditions. So in that conversation, if you're feeling like you need to go meet them to build rapport, just say like, just say, well, what I want to do is get with you for about five or 10 minutes and show you how to take advantage of the current market conditions. So there is a process to make this experience awesome for you. Buying a house should be fun. Most people have so much stress and so much like just they're so confused from looking at 10 houses in one day. Let's make this a fun process and I'll help you take advantage of the current market conditions. So let's get together for five or 10 minutes. I'll tell you how that works. Or I can go through it on the phone or in a Zoom. I can do anything right then and just take them through the quick buyer consultation because the buyer consultation is about setting up the MLS search. Well, first it's about getting pre-approved, right? I've already, I'm gonna find out what you're really looking for. Then we're gonna set up a search directly in the system that the real estate agents use. Then you're going to drive by those properties and you're going to call me with the ones that stay on the list. Because, And I've already programmed them by saying half of what I send you won't even stay on your list. If you, I, I guarantee I've been doing this long enough that you drive by these properties I send you. If I send you 10, you're not even going to want to go see five to eight of them. You're going to want to see one or two of them because you see what's next door. You see the location, the things that don't show up on an MLS. And then we'll get you in there right away. So I've just gone through that whole process. Now, once you find a home, I need you to be ready too. If you are, then this again can qualify them on the front end. And it's like, if we can get together for five or 10 minutes and show you how the process works, great, we do that. Now we're having this conversation and it's like, you know, if you walk into one that is a steal of a deal, We've got to have that pre-approval in place. You got to, you're going to need your checkbook with you because to write an earnest money check. Maybe you guys are doing a lot of wiring now, but we're going to need to have some money set aside to show how earnest you are. What? We need money up front? Yep. I mean, I want them to know that earnest money check's got to happen. We're going to write the contract. We're going to send it over, get it approved, and we'll negotiate through any inspections and all that stuff. So that's kind of the buyer consultation is taking them through the whole process. But on the very front end is about getting that pre-approval driving by the properties, you're going to be one of the first ones to see them. And then you're going to text me with the ones that you actually want to see. 30 years, nobody has called me and said, see, I told you uh, all 10 of them I want to see. Not one person ever has wanted to see every property that I see. Every single person has called me back and said, you know what? You were right. There were some crappy houses out there that, yeah, we didn't want to see. In fact, the current buyer, we just got them under contract and they're closed and they were a referral from an Arizona agent that I used to coach back in the day. 
And they, when they first met me after they drove by the properties for like a couple of weeks, nah, nah. And then one hit when I met them for the first time at the first property and they were pre-approved and all that. So otherwise I wouldn't have met them. And she goes, you know, I asked them, I said, what do you think of the process so far? And she's like, you know, it really is good. I thought you were joking when you said that we had to drive by them first and you wouldn't show them to us. <laughs> and I thought maybe we were like being punked or something. But honestly, this has been an awesome process. And see, they would have been so confused. They were also buyers that every single house I showed them, it was an hour in the house. I don't know why she needed an hour. She just him hawed around. I could not rush her through it. She's a referral. And best part, listen to this, because I have systems in place, I was never stressed about it. I, I knew what my schedule was. And when I knew every time I left for a showing with her, I told my wife, I'll be back in a couple hours. You're just showing one house. Yeah, it, it's the buyer from up north, <laughs> you know, so it just I knew. And so it was on my schedule. And I knew whenever I was showing her house because she was always looking at him without her husband that I gave at that time. But because of the systems, I was never stressed out about it. It's very casual. I mean, I, I love my I love what I do and I don't mind doing that once in a while if that person's personality is really that. If there was a way to shortcut that and get her in and out of there in 15 minutes, I would have done it. And it was that's just not her personality style. So capture that so you can get them into the database. You've got to be able to start that campaign to remind you to make the call, make the call. Those internet leads, it's call day one, call day two, call day three, call day five, call day 11, with emails going out in between saying, I've been reaching out to you, I hate to see you miss any great deals. Uh, there's, pro there's, you know, 10 properties probably came on in the last week and most of those are under contract. I just don't want you to miss anything. Um, have you gotten pre-approved yet? A to-do pops up and says, call the lender and see if they've contacted them yet to see if they've gotten approval. So that's like three days later. And if the lender hasn't heard from them yet, we're sending them another message and going, hey, the lender hasn't heard from you yet. Here's his information again. I gave it to him again. He's calling you now. So we're actually pushing that process through because they said they were ready to buy and we told them how we work. Now, at that point, those 98 percenters will say, well, we're really not buying right now. We were just my husband was like, he's he doesn't want to move. I'm the one that wants to move. Now, see how I just found out a whole lot more information about him, right? So now might want to get in with the husband and just see if that's a possibility or if he does the husband even know you're looking at houses. No, not yet. I'm just kind of starting the process. Okay, cool. So now we're going to keep the search on. We're going to keep doing that stuff and we'll stay in touch, but they're not my priority until they get pre-approved and they're ready to buy. So you can filter them through the process as you're going through this and you got your notes in the database. The calls are happening no matter what. You guys, there's, there's letters that print out automatically that don't really, they're not appropriate for the person that I'm sending them to. So one of our generic letters, and this is just my caution of being too automated, one of our generic letters that comes out says, hey, I was driving through your neighborhood the other day, and we've got a lot of buyers looking for homes. You know, if you've ever considered selling, let us know. So now one of those letters today that was going out is on my drip, my 10-year follow-up drip plan for one of my clients that have bought and sold with us three or four times. And they're in there, they're not going anywhere. They're in their forever house, right? But that letter came out. I still keep letters showing up to them all the time. But this one said, drive through their neighborhood. They live out in the country, right? And they're, they're really, truly our best friends. He was my best man in my wedding. That'll tell you that the past client became a great friendship, right? So he's in my past. He was a best man in my wedding. I'm not going to send him a letter that says I was driving through your neighborhood the other day. Right. So you got to be careful about how automated your system is and watch and see what's going out. But for the most part, I keep everything pretty generic and I do just review the letters real quick so I can write notes on them before I put them in the mail. That's the actual mail stuff. So buyers get mail from us, not just emails. They get mail from us, too, because husband and wives don't always talk to each other. So if you mail something and email something, you might only be emailing to one email address. When you mail, the other one might see it. Or maybe that it's just another chance for them to see that information to make sure they're looking for those properties. Any questions so far? Is this good stuff so far? Am I just kind of 
reeling you in to just kind of keep thinking about things a little differently and not get too trapped up in uh, with the blinders yeah. on, right? Okay. I, I have a question. I have yes, a question, absolutely. Fred. So is the long-term nurture that you were just showing on, on smart plans, is that what you are referring to as the eight by eight? And I'm sorry that, I, that somehow that has not sunk in for me. I'm not really getting the what the eight by eight means exactly. No, gotcha. So the campaigns or the smart plans, the eight by eight, the internet lead conversion plan, all of that stuff. And it's a great question. It's a series of events that happen when you hit the start button. And the smart plans are set up to say like day zero after I start this smart plan, I want this to pop up. And it could be a call reminder, for example. And an eight by eight, I'll just give you the eight by eight example. The eight by eight is anybody right there that you get a one-on-one -on -one with or that you get on the phone and talk to and connect with goes on an eight by eight and a 33 touch, right? Which now in the new book is 36 touch. And it doesn't even matter if it's 33 or 36 touch guys, that, that's in the book. It gives you a guideline to go off of, but you could send 42 or you could send 31 and it's probably gonna be as effective. Now you don't wanna send 20 and you don't need to send 50 because now you're just, you're not getting the results that you want that they know they've tracked and or you're spending more money than you need to. And if you're sending somebody 50 emails, that's gonna be too much too. Back to the eight by eight, I'll tell you what a campaign, a real simple campaign looks like is I, I connect with somebody. So I looked at my master list. I had their phone number and their address. I picked up my phone and I called them. They answered, hey, haven't talked to you in a while. I want to connect to see how you're doing, whatever. And it could be a buyer to ask them about a property and we go through that same thing, right? So we connect and we talk and oh yeah, and you're still living on XYZ Street. Yep. Okay, cool. So I scratch them out of my butt. Well, first of all, I put them in say for example, command or your database, name, address, phone number, I verified it because on the call, you still live in there, yes, great. After I put them in, I crossed them off my master list. They're now in my management system. And then I say, start the eight by eight because anybody that you connect with, especially if they're not buying right now, goes on an eight touch in eight week. But even if they're buying right now, you're, they might go on an eight touch in eight week because you still have to brand yourself as the person that's going to be their go-to for information about any properties that hit the market. However, you might have a little more aggressive one for going out to look at houses, setting them up on a search. So that eight by eight plan, when I start it, it says day, there's, there's nine things in this plan. The first one says day zero, a to-do. Did you send the handwritten note? Right. So now here's what happened in real life. Actually, let me walk through it first. Seven days later, it says, send this email. And that might be a link for the property searches. Right. And then seven days after that. So it says 14 days after I start this plan, print my letter resume that just kind of talks about the team and how we work. And then seven days after that, so 21 days after the plan starts. So once I hit the start button, it just the 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 system calculates the time and it throws up in my to-do list. Hey, it's been 21 days. It's time to call them again. Or, Hey, it's been 28 days. It's time to send this letter. You see what I'm saying? And it gets all the way down to the end. At the end of eight weeks, there's a ninth step. That's a to-do that says the plan has ended. Start another plan. Well, once you've done the eight by eight, according to the book, you do a 36 touch. So then I start the 36 touch plan. Now, this is when it gets interesting because now there's 36 things that are going to happen over the next year. And I'll never have to think about them once I hit the start button. It will just tell me when it's time to do whatever. And if it's an email, it goes out automatically. If it's a letter, I got to grab the letter and put it in an envelope. If it's a call or find them on social media and send them a message, then that's me physically doing stuff. So you want those personal touches built into your campaigns. Does that help answer your question on that? It totally. Thank you. That is again. a smart plan and you're automating your business. And so now imagine guys, listen, every single person you meet from this day forward, every single person that you connect with or have a two-way conversation with gets in your master list. <clears throat> then that means every single person that you come in contact with goes in your master list 
means if you connected with them well and you've got their address and their phone number, you just go ahead and get them in your database and start the eight by eight. And you'll never ever forget about them again because in my eight touch, there is a call at week four and there's a call at week eight. In my 36 touch, there's a call every three months and a touch them on social media in the month and a half in between right after those calls. So eight times a year, we personally touch them, send direct messages, not automated. So that whatever the automated stuff that is going out in between that stuff is just bridging the gap between your next two-way conversation with them so that they'll answer your phone. And if every single person you meet from this day forward goes into your database at, and making it a goal of five a day, five new buyers coming in a day, and you have a plan that keeps you in touch with them, you'll never lose touch with that buyer. Let me pause out here, because here's what a lot of people do. They have some automatic funnel come in with all these internet leads, and then they just do call day once a week, and you just open it up, and you just randomly, you're just calling, like a call center or an ISA, if you've heard that, an inside sales associate, where they just call through the list. They call 20 people a day. You go through bold and you commit to your 20 calls a day for seven weeks, but you only do 20 calls a day the first week or two. And then you're really not doing it in the weeks after that because it's all just bulked in there and making 100 calls in a day. If you've ever taken bold and you've done a bold 100 day, they're horrific. They're, I mean, if somebody can speak up, if you've done one before and you love it so much, you do it every day, I need to hear from you. Because there's nothing fun about calling 100 people a day. Nothing fun. Five and a half hours every single time I do it. And it's just grueling and brutal, right? And you pick up two appointments about every time you do it, if you've done it before. Um, so there's nothing fun about that. This just spreads it out over time. And when those plans are running, I'm just responding to a few calls a day. You're not going to have five or 10 calls a day by feeding your database for at least a year or two. Because of the way these plans like spread out, when they go to the eight by eight and it ends and it goes to a 36 touch, it spreads the calls out now from hey, every, every two or week four and week eight to every month or three months, right? So it spreads them out and then you're feeding it every day. It never, it doesn't really quite crisscross for about nine months to two years where you might have, if you really did five a day, you might have 10 calls to do in one day. But by then, I, a year or two from now, your, your phone's ringing with business. You're not having to go find business. But you got to do five a day every single day or you're never even going to get to five calls a day if, if you don't even put the five people in. So you got to get five a day, five calls a day before you'll ever get to 10 calls a day, before you'll go from five or 10 sales a year to 20 sales a year to 50 sales a year to 100 sales a year. And the phone just rings. Great information. All right. Let me just make sure we've got, because I got some really good stuff on how to get these people into your database. So remember what I said, the probably the number one key thing that you guys cannot forget is instant, absolute instant callback, instant callback. And when you get those calls, you got the incoming sheet. Blue for buyers, the way I do it, right? And there's their contact information at the top because I need to get their address and their phone number first before I can find out what they're looking for. Um, okay, so that's the uh, incoming lead sheet and that actually helps you qualify these buyers to figure out if they're a 1%. And again, 98% of the time, I might've grabbed this sheet and they're not a buyer. But if they called off the internet or something, I am still finding out what they were looking for or what they would like to move. Why is that important to you? Oh, we're just, we're gonna, I'm just starting the process. My husband retires next year. It goes in my notes, that's for a year, right? But they're gonna go on an eight by eight for sure until they become an active buyer. Now an active buyer is not gonna just sit on an eight by eight. They're probably gonna be on my active buyer search who's now getting MLS listing. So now the message changes in that campaign to be a couple of emails linking them back to the website, my website, the KW site, where they can search for a specific address or have my text number in there to text me any address you want information on. Um, it talks about getting away from Zillow and Trulia, that you're looking at the leftovers. So there's a whole different message that goes in for that plan. 
So typically what we'll do, and not typically we do, we stop the eight by eight plan when they turn into an active buyer, they've been pre-approved and we set up an MLS search. Then they go on the active buyer plan and that changes the message and it changes my contact with them. Because if I haven't shown them a house in a week and it pops up for a call every seven days, well, I know when that call pops up, if I showed them a house yesterday or the day before, I don't have to call them. But if I haven't showed them a house in the last week, I'm calling them. Hey, are you getting those properties, right? So that call, those triggers are in there to make sure that we're, we're always available for them. And if you do just call them, even though you saw them two days ago, that's fine too. The more they hear your voice, the better. You're plugged in. Hey, is everything going okay? I know we just looked at that house yesterday. Change your mind about anything on that one? Otherwise, we would have written an offer, right? So anyway, it just keeps me plugged into that person at whatever level they're at. An expired listing, we're going to try and call them every day for seven days straight. Or for sale by owner, we're going to call them maybe once a week and send them something in between on how to stage your house or how to have an open house or, you know, things like that. So they're going to get a call once a week from us. And I, if you haven't heard this statistic yet, it's something like, the first time you call up for sale by owner, first of all, about 70% of your competition hasn't even called them. If somebody's focusing on for sale by owners and you got like, you know, the 30% of the agent population that maybe called them, by the next week when you call them, you're down to 80% of your competition is not following up. By the third week, 90% of your competition isn't following up and it's probably even less than that or more than that, I mean. And then by week four, 100% of your competition is gone. There's nobody that calls up for sale by owner four weeks in a row. There's just not, unless you have it on a system that tells you to do it, it's not happening. There could be a rare instance once in a while, but I'm telling you, it's not happening for you probably in your market. Um, okay, so on this, when we're getting, the, getting out their information, it's in that buyer intake form. And that is in your handout that you downloaded if you downloaded the student manual from the online resource site. If you don't have that, then I want you to make sure you contact or just send an email or something in the group and say you don't have it. But I send out the email so you guys can grab the access of the recorded classes and all the content. Um, all right. So somebody, I will say, I just checked the comments and we had uh, a comment from an agent that said, um, I, I need to capture buyers, but I don't have any listings yet. I'm still waiting to get business cards. So new agent that's in. Again, I'm going to kind of reiterate, start a master list, pull your Facebook friends list, pull everybody off your phone and start connecting with them. That is the best way to find the most buyers as fast as possible because they already know you or they've met you somewhere along the way. You just haven't done a good job of keeping in touch with them. And for every hundred people, 20 of them are moving this year. For every hundred people that you can write out a list of everyone you know, 20 of them are moving. So that means one to two of them are moving for every hundred. If you have a thousand people in there, 200 of them are moving. You want buyers, start there. It, it, this inner circle is the absolute no holds barred fastest way to grow a real estate business. But yet we all kind of get into business and we're trying to find the next deal as fast as possible. So, you know, we're going and hearing all the stuff about going to for sale by owners, going to expires, going to this, going to that. So here's how I'm going to answer the question to that side. I told you the easy way to do it or the simple way to do it. It's not easy because not enough people do it. So something has to be difficult about it. I don't know what it is other than just making the list, picking up the phone and calling them, tell them you haven't talked to them in a while. Forget about the real estate part of it. It will show up on its own. The next thing I would say is for sale by owners. Have they already found a house? Old expired listings that are maybe just in the last six months. They were looking for a house. These are potential buyers that you can come in on the backside for sale by owners. Knock on the door. Go knock on the door. Hey, I'm a real estate agent. I know you're selling your house yourself. That's not why I'm here today. And I'm addressing your specific question. You're there for what? Buyers. You don't have a listing yet. So I'm not here to list your house today. What I'm here for is to see how that process is going. Have you guys already found another house or are you just starting the process? 
because somebody who's selling their house themselves, you might be missing out on all the properties that are hitting the MLS if you're looking for a house yourself. And here's the great part. You don't have to pay me. Most of the time I get paid from the MLS side of the listing so I can show you every property for sale, including a for sale by owner if you find another one of those you like. However, I can open up your search and do that for free and start sending you the properties you're looking for. We already have a, we already have a house under contract and it's contingent upon our house selling. If they say that, in my mind, mental note right there, how long are you going to give your house, yourself the opportunity to sell your house before you'll lose the one you're buying, right? Well, we're going to try it this weekend and next weekend, and then we need to do something. We've got a relative that's in real estate, whatever they say. I mean, you can go through a million different things that they say. Say, well, I tell you what, I'll follow up with you then. And I'm also going to send you a couple of things that I know work for us to help sell houses at open houses. You have an open house coming up, blah, 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 right? Second thing I'm leading towards is one of the things I could do is give you, a, and you may not have this yet, but again, if, you're, if you don't have this stuff and you want to find buyers, 800 number or a QR code or something like that that captures information from the sign, a link with an address of their property. So you could actually set up a squeeze page in Keller Williams and assign it to their address and create the I want to buy form basically, right? And say, I've got a writer with a web address that we can put information about your house on there that people can click on it. I'll get you massive exposure. Like just our company alone, we've got 180,000 agents across the globe and we have a website that's maxed out on the internet. We go to 350 websites when we list a property and I can list your house on there. It'll have your contact information in there. However, I can capture those buyers for you. I'll know they came from your house. I'll get them in for pre-approval, make sure they can even buy your house, do all that stuff. And if they end up buying your house, I step away. You can even have me help you with the paperwork. I'll ch I charge $2,000 to help you with the paperwork. Um, and I might not even get into that price yet. But I say I have a flat fee that I do that paperwork for a seller if they need me to and handle the whole process and coordinate with the title company and everything. Might do that for a flat process. But eventually I'm going to get the house listed. And the other side of it is those buyers that come and look at your house that don't buy your house. I'll keep a hold of them because I have an incredible follow-up system, right? Because you came to Ignite and you've heard Brad talk about it over and over and over again, that you capture them, you put them in your system, you put them on a drip and I'll stay in touch with them so that if they decide to look at something else, but they still like your home, I'll still bring them back and just step aside. If, you, if they want to buy it directly with you and you don't need anybody helping you, I'll step aside and get them back to you. Nobody else will do that. But if they find something else and buy it and they weren't buying yours, you know, the, the thing you're doing for them is you're helping them get pre-qualified and you're holding on to them to bring them back to them if they go out and look at other houses and they still like that one. So I know that I do this for for sale by owners all the time because I'm looking, I help buyers have a great process and I help people sell their houses. Does that make sense? How many of you are just like, holy crap, that was pretty good. <laughs> all right. Good, good. I want to bring value. All right. So we got to pull this thing together, which we are just a couple of minutes over, but you guys asked some great questions. So it's always worth it when you guys are doing this stuff. But just pre-qualifying buyers, again, we can't master all of this stuff in one hour, okay? You've got to capture them first. You got to call them back immediately. You got to get them into your system and put them on a follow-up plan before this even matters getting them to sign the buyer agency contract. You've got to get into conversation with them first. But really, I already shared this part earlier when I said, I'm going to take you through the process and show you how to take advantage of the current market conditions. Remember we said that? Uh -huh. Here's what's interesting. How many of you already forgot about that? It, it's, you're not only going to remember 25% of what we talk about today. So it's about going through this over and over again. So I'm going to take you through the process and show you how to take advantage of the current market condition. Now, here's how you get the contract signed. It's this difficult. So can you see how that would be a benefit to have me look out for your best interest? So can you see how that would be a benefit to have me look out for your best interest? After I just went through all that stuff, send you the properties, first one by, drive by, get you pre-approved, you know, all that. And then when you find a house, we write the earnest money, we do inspections, we negotiate, we get you the closing. Can you see how that would be a benefit to have somebody work, to have me looking out for your best interest? 
what is their answer going to be 99.999% of the time? Yes. Right? And the 0.0001% of the time when they say, not really, then that's when you say, well, I didn't do a good job of explaining the benefit of having a realtor represent you then. What part did I miss, right? But yes, and then when they say yes, you say, great, this form allows me to do that. And just hand them the pen, sign the buyer agency, they'll sign it, okay. They won't even care to read it because they just said they saw the benefit of having somebody look out for their best interest. Now, if they get the skittishes or whatever, again, you, did so, you didn't explain something properly or you haven't gained their trust yet. And if that happens and they're like, uh, we don't really know what all this says, it's like, Guys, just take it home and read it. There is a benefit to looking out for your best interest. I want you to totally understand it. And this is what I do. This is what I do is to help people have a great experience when they buy, buy a house and it should be fun. So that's how you get the agency sign. And there we are, we're right at the end of our class. Um, I gotta get to the, uh, I, wanna, I wanna have you guys do the um, recap review or whatever again have you guys been filling that out when i post it if you would it really helps uh, us know just by clicking on this link before we end the session so it opens up a, a window so you can fill that out here in a second it's really not that big a deal um, but just gives us some feedback on the class if you like the material and obviously you have the option to let us know if we missed something too that we didn't get deep enough into but i'm always available for all of you i mean I'm your personal connection with all of this material um, that you guys can call me anytime, email me anytime, text me anytime, whatever. I'll put my number in here again in my email, just so you have it. Any questions before we close it out or any like just amazing ahas you might've had? Is your brain exploding? You don't know? Yes, I think, you know, what you explained about how to capture those for sale by owners was excellent. I never thought of that. That's really completely out of the box. I'll yeah. apply. There's a hundred ways to get a hundred buyers. And that's, and that's, these are ways like I liked because I didn't have to come in and sell anything. I like to be a resource and come from contribution. And when you build the relationship, you're going to be the one they choose most of the time. Yeah. So it's awesome. Thank you. Just, just pushing on the, the FISBO person coming from contribution, but then saying, um, well, where are you going? And do you need help buying? That's like another side of the coin where it's like, holy crap, you know, that's another conversation to get them to trust me and could turn into business. So yep. you know, killing two birds with one stone. It's just, I didn't think about that. And I know, cause I'm always trying to, you know, build to the list or build to the appointment, but I never talk about, you know, where are you going? And yeah. You know, you need to have buy-in. So. And you put you can see what 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 pertinent information could you send a for sale by owner constantly that would make them open your email? Well, if they're buying and it's a it's an MLS search of the hottest new listings that are hitting the area they're looking in, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna open that email all the time. And you're and you're also it's that um, reticular activator system that we talk about a lot, and that is once you do something, you start seeing it everywhere. Well, once you, they're getting real estate listings sent to them consistently and they're the newest, hottest listings, all of a sudden it's real estate. They see every sign everywhere. They, if you have signs in the area, they see your sign, right? Um, that's another one too. Somebody said earlier about the, the certain complex. I would have a search set up for myself for that building that any new listings or preview listings that came on the market, I would be contacting that agent going, I mean, the minute it goes live, I would be contacting the agent going, hey, I'd like to hold the house open for you, right? Hey, there's nothing that says you can't hold a com competitor's house open, I don't think, right? Hey, well, I want to co-op with agents in there. I'd like to help you sell the property. Mind if I do an open house? I mean, <laughs> there's no rules in real estate, really. I, there might be one on that. You might have to check. I don't know. But I'd probably do it and then figure out I wasn't supposed to. Ask for forgiveness later. When you come from na naiveness. <laughs> All right. Anybody else before we end it? I want to make sure I answer any questions you guys have and be available for you. 
Brad, where would we find the, the buyer's sheet that you were talking about? I, I tried to look while you were talking, but I wasn't able to yep. pick out the right one. In your email that you got for the online, just pull down the uh, manual, your, your manual for this session. And there's one in there. And okay. then there's, I think there's even a folder that says some of like Brad Corn stuff. And that actually has my blue intake form and my yellow, yellow seller intake form. They really okay. look the same. It's just some of the housing questions in the middle are a little different. All right. Thank you. Uh-huh. And you guys, you'll notice on those intake forms too, um, blue for buyer here. Oh, I, yeah, I think I did show you the blue one. Do you rent or own now? Have you been pre-approved? So I don't skip these questions here. So this is how I find out they've been pre-approved. Oh yeah, we don't even know what that means, right? So it allows me to continue to talk to them. Did I get them in my database, et cetera. I'm sorry, uh, come on. This is my first time here. Where do you get those materials? Uh, those are, um, let me see here if I can pull it up real quick and post it in the uh, chat box here before we end. Let me do this again a little differently. I sent an email out. If you had been registered for the class in the past, you should have gotten an email. Nope, um, let's see, handouts for each session. Oh, I highlighted too much there. Here, you can click this and save this to your favorites. I mean, if you just click it right now before we close out, you'll at least be able to save this under your favorites or copy and paste the URL. You can also click on this. We record this session each time so you can watch the videos again. And uh, that should be good for now. So just click both of those. It should open up a tab on your computer so you can copy those URLs and send them to yourself Perfect. in an email. Thank you so much. Yep. All right, guys, this has been, this is so fun hanging out with you guys. Honestly, I love this stuff because all this does is make me go out and work harder every day too. I, you know, I've been doing this for 30 years, so I just kind of go with the flow, but it always brings the heightened awareness of everything that we teach. Buyers will be my heightened awareness for the next few days. So I love teaching this stuff and sharing it with you. All right, with that, I think we're going to end it for the day. Thanks a lot, Brad. It was a good one. Appreciate you it. You betcha. You betcha. Thank Glad you. To hear that. Thank you.